So the right-wing partisan Supreme Court has gone so far that even conservative Chief Justice John Roberts is objecting. Let's talk about it in today's video. Hi, I'm Mike Greiner. I'm a lifelong Democratic activist who's concerned about the direction our country is taking. I'm also a lawyer and an academic, and I'm here to give you the ammo you need to stand up to the MAGA crowd. So during the Trump administration, the EPA had passed a regulation that essentially made it harder for states and Native American tribes to object to petroleum company projects that went through their territory. The basis for these objections was the Clean Water Act and the fear that some of these petroleum projects would pollute the waters protected by the Clean Water Act. Now, this is not some theoretical concern. After all, here in my home state of Michigan, we had a pipeline owned by the oil company Enbridge that had a leak and ended up polluting the Kalamazoo River back in 2010 to such an extent that the river is still polluted today, 10 years later. But of course, the Trump administration took the side of the oil companies. I mean, God forbid the EPA actually stand up for people other than the oil companies and essentially made it harder for states to be able to object to these projects. Well, a group of states, tribes, and environmental groups objected to this change, saying that it was inconsistent with the provisions of the Clean Water Act. Now, you have to remember the way administrative law works is that it requires the EPA to follow laws that were passed by Congress. Because, of course, nobody in the EPA has been elected. So if we're going to have a functioning democracy, obviously whatever rules and regulations the EPA sets in place have to be consistent with the laws that are passed by Congress. It's pretty common, by the way, for agencies to pass their own rules and regulations to help them implement laws passed by Congress. After all, the United States being so large and diverse and dealing with such complicated subjects, they can only put so much detail into the statutes that they pass. As a result, all these details are left to be worked out by the agencies. Now, interestingly enough, the agencies in their process of developing these rules, which is called rule promulgation, have become major targets of lobbying by industry. And in fact, it appears from what I've seen that more money is spent on lobbying the agencies as they develop these rules to implement statutes than are actually spent on lobbying Congress regarding the statutes in the first place. But in this case, it seems pretty clear that the EPA, led as it was by a group of Trump right-wing appointees, many of whom had actually worked for the oil industry, had no interest in following the actual law. So that was the basis of three lawsuits filed across the country. Now, as these lawsuits were proceeding, of course, Joe Biden won the election, and he immediately asked these courts to dismiss the cases while the EPA reworked the rule. Biden had made it clear he did not favor the Trump administration's position, allowing oil companies to more easily pollute our waterways. Two of the courts did exactly as was requested. The third, however, not only dismissed the case, but actually vacated the Trump administration's rule across the nation. Now, typically for a court to be able to do that, they'd first have to have a trial and have findings of fact where the court would assess if the rule actually followed the legislation or not, essentially give both parties the opportunity to argue that point. But in this case, it appears that the judge, William Alsop of San Francisco, took matters into his own hands and probably overstepped his bounds. As a result, now while the EPA is going through the process of developing a rule that more accurately reflects the intent of the Clean Water Act, a process that typically takes anywhere from six months to a year at a minimum, Louisiana and the American Petroleum Institute filed a lawsuit to stop the order by Judge Alsop from San Francisco. Now, in responding to this lawsuit, the lawyer for the EPA basically acknowledged that Judge Alsop probably stepped a little bit beyond where he should have gone. Nevertheless, the argument is that the EPA is redoing the rule anyway. Judge Alsop basically just returned the rule back to what it was before the Trump administration took its action. And now we're going to have a new rule that's more appropriately attuned to the Clean Water Act anyway. So it's a moot point. Ah, but the right-wing partisan Supreme Court did not think that was enough. Louisiana and the American Petroleum Institute filed a motion with the Supreme Court act asking that it take emergency action to overrule the ruling by Judge Alsop. Now, typically these emergency motions 
are reserved for true emergencies where irreparable harm will occur if the Supreme Court doesn't take action. So the classic example of that would be where the death penalty is pending. I mean, because after all, you can't undo the death penalty if there is something wrong with it. So courts actually have a series of requirements that they apply before they determine if one of these requests for emergency action should be granted. One of those requirements is that there'd be substantial harm. And another one of those requirements is that the plaintiffs are likely to succeed in their action. Well, in this case, Elena Kagan, writing for the minority, pointed out that the state of Louisiana and the American Petroleum Institute didn't even offer some reason for the emergency. There was nothing pending. There was nothing that would be harmed if the Supreme Court did not take this action. What's more is to say that they had a substantial chance of success really requires on the ideological wing of the Supreme Court, because the fact of the matter is the EPA is redoing the rule anyway. It's a moot point. Typically, courts don't consider actions that are moot. They need to consider issues that are actual cases and controversy, not something that doesn't matter because they're ruling on it. Well, that's exactly what they did here. But what's more is this ruling was issued on an emergency basis without a hearing, without briefs being filed by the parties. It was simply an order issued on an unsigned basis without any kind of explanation by the Supreme Court. This is what's called the shadow docket by some. And it makes sense because we have no idea what went into the deliberations of the Supreme Court. We can only presume that basically it was their ideology which favors the oil companies over the EPA. This action in this case was so outrageous that even Chief Justice John Roberts, a Republican appointee by George W. Bush, who is no friend of regulations and has made it clear that he's no friend of the EPA, and who actually worked as a political appointee in the Reagan White House, argued that the Supreme Court had gone too far this time. He sided with the three remaining liberals on the court, saying that this is a step the Supreme Court should not have taken, that there was no emergency at issue, and at any rate, the issue's moot. But at this point, the radical right-wing arm of the Supreme Court doesn't care about anything. They don't care about their credibility. They don't care about their legitimacy. They don't care about the law. They care about their ideology, and that's all. And they're going to do whatever they can to turn America into a right-wing dystopia. This just speaks once again to how critical it is for Democrats to elect enough senators in the upcoming election to ensure that if any openings come to the Supreme Court, that President Biden will have the opportunity to appoint somebody good there. Because amazingly enough, as Lindsey Graham admitted out loud, if the Republicans had control of the Senate, Katanji Brown Jackson would not be getting a vote or even a hearing in the Senate. We'd be seeing Merrick Garland all over again. In essence, Republicans will make it so that they can control the court no matter how the people vote, only emphasizing the fact that we need to get out and make sure we vote. Well, if you don't believe the concerns I have with this partisan right-wing Supreme Court, check out this other video I did where I talk about their attack on free speech that's coming. I'll see you then. In the meantime, let's hope for continued progress. Thank you.